Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my, uh, let's call it my Cloud Adoption Framework Architecture Series. Again, I've not got really, <laughs> not got a name for it. Uh, it's just it's just to do with the Cloud Adoption Framework, specifically on Azure. Now, um, the, the reason I decided to do this series was just because I, I within my work, I was, seeing a, I was speaking to a lot of customers who have adopted cloud or are looking to adopt cloud and i felt i feel like there's a lot of neglect on certain areas governance is a big one identity is another and security is another so i'm slowly going through i want to kind of share my thoughts around how organizations can uh, better plan for those and design those so we've kind of talked a little bit about governance kind of touched on naming convention and tagging which i think are really low-hanging fruit easy to do um so i've kind of talked a lot about those i did some sort of practical exercises I touched on identity in the last episode. I just want to continue that and just give you some examples of services within Microsoft Cloud uh, and how you, uh, customers can use those. And, and again, just some things you need to think about when designing this identity platform. Um, so I'm going to go into the I'm going to go into my demo tenant today um, and, and talk a little bit about. It. So uh, three areas I want to kind of look at <clears throat> are um, MFA. Um, conditional access policy, well, four areas, conditional access policies, a bit of uh, more security, so defender for identity, and we'll talk a little bit about Sentinel as well. And these are all kind of practical elements that, that customers can use and, and, and look at as well. So first thing is about enforcing um, onto MFA, uh, again, for all users, um, especially ones that have, have access to, to Azure, the Azure environment. Now, um, probably in, in the next episode, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, separating uh, your admin accounts, but admin, it's more kind of separation, of, especially with, with hybrid infrastructures. Again, a lot of customers tend to um, mix on premises with with cloud identity. And although you know you, you synchronize, you use OntraSync and etc. and so far that Ontra Connect to do that, when it comes to administrative level things, you really need to have a separation. I'm going to talk a, lot, a little bit about that. I'll, I'll do that. Wait for the next episode around that. Let's focus on on these practical elements first. So. Um, MFA, right, for, for enabling that, not just for all users, but your administrators as well, okay? So that's that's managed through conditional access. You can do user you per user, but I, I, again, it's better to do at the sort of conditional access level because then it's just it's just managed by policy, right? Um, so we can go down to conditional access, and I'm going to be able to cover two birds with one stone here because, again, as well as MFA, you can use conditional access policies for, for sort of um, for users that have rights to, uh, to to Azure to again specify the, the the portals they have access to or make sure they're on uh, compliant machines and again an example you might have a requirement to carry out certain administrative tasks um, only for specific locations or maybe specific workstations or even signing risk tolerance stuff like that so we can manage all that through policy now they've changed a lot of this over the years and, and the sort of management of it now again um you have sort of your existing policies you can can view here um and again from here you do need a certain level of access it's my demo time so i've got global admin access but again we're going to talk a little about the different roles probably in, a, in another episode identity is huge so we could talk about this all day um so you've got options i want to look at the templates first of all so um, you can never do a custom template here, just go through a new policy and go through the wizard. Um, or you can actually, I want you to take a close look at some of the new policy templates. So um, they've separated it into different sort of areas. So you can have got the secure foundation, which is this is the one we're talking about here, which you want to, and you can download the JSON file here if you need to, if you need to, and want to have maybe customize it a little bit. They've got zero trust, which I'm going to be focusing on as well. Um, remote work, protect administrators, and emerging threats, and all. So. For the Secure Foundation, straight away, we can look, we've got the MFA one here for admin specifically. So this is what I'm talking about, right? You've got required MFA for authentication for all users, which is just general. That should be a default, really. But when it, well, so, should, so should this. But let's have a look at this. So this is part of these secure, so that you can, you can find this specific um, template within the Secure Foundation, within the Zero Trust, within the Protect Administrator um sort of scenarios and it's called require multi-factor authentication for admins so it excludes users a current user because if you're creating it you're normally going to be with you're going to be doing this an admin account with certain privileges um but these are roles that include these are the roles that are included so anyone with global admin security admin you can see all the different level admins so if you are one of these built-in admins you will be included in this okay when you're creating this it's very important to make sure you plan communication with your admins and exclude and i'll be talking about break glass accounts further on in this series but 
um, break, uh, you know, exclude break glass accounts. They have to be excluded from all policies because they're like your emergency ones. And then it says it includes all cloud apps. Now, I actually had a chat with a customer about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they, they spoke about. So this is actually uh, and when you go into the sort of recommendations within Entra and the secure, security score, it's a recommendation to um, lock this down to specific cloud apps. So rather than going all apps, you lock down access to the Azure portal, PowerShell, you know, CLI, the de developer, you know, um, Azure DevOps, etc. And you can do it at that level. And what they said to me is, you know, is it worth doing this? And I, I think, again, I've talked about this previously, there has to be a balance between security and um, productivity. If you're locking down, like if you've got policies for every different portal and you're locking it all down, then that can cause, you know, it can be, it can stop your admins from being productive. I'm, you know, I'm, again, I'm not going to name drop, but I'm doing some work for another client. And they're, they're so security mad that they, they, they implement zero trust down to like, where they need like, they need, you know, security and, and privileges on specific resource level. It's just, it's just madness. And it stops you from the amount of times I've had to go back to them and ask for further permissions. It's mad. Absolutely mad. Waste my time, waste their time. Um, and, it, and it wastes more cost because t it's time that I'm having to try and troubleshoot permissions where I should be fixing their issue or, or deploying what they've asked me to deploy. Um, so again, it does a grant, uh, grant access require MFA. So when you, when you get access, you need to do MFA, right? So straight away, we can see the, the permissions that we can, we can download it or we can just go to, to deploy that, right? So we can go to we've selected it and go to review. And so this, we don't have to make any changes to this, right? Um, so this is a secure foundation one. So we've been, you know, we're talking about identity specifically. This one's around secure when, so let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look what does this do. So this is available within the secure foundations here, trust for remote work and it's security. It's um, securing security info registration, right? So we can, we can see straight away that this is uh, secure when and how users register for, it should really be Entra, but it's Entra MFA and the self password reset. So again, focusing on identity, um, and again, if we just go back to view, it includes all users this time, not just admins, it excludes any guest users or external users, obviously the current user and it excluded roles of global admin. So if you're global, global admin, you are excluded from this. User actions is registry security information, it includes any locations, uh, excludes all trusted locations. And if you, if you try and register, you will require MFA. So again, requiring MFA for a specific item there. I'm not going to talk about blo blocking legacy authentication, I'm trying to focus on uh, kind of admin level security. If we go to zero trust again, we can see the admin one there. Um, we see a lot of the same ones here. Let's go on to protect administrators because this is one I kind of want to focus about. Again, we've got the MFA one here for admins. <clears throat> we've got um, blocking legacy authentication for admins as well. So that if you block authentication endpoints that can't be used to bypass MFA. This is an interesting one here. Require MFA for Azure management. Let's just go, let's view this one. And this is a really interesting one as well, but let's go to this one first. So um, this requires MFA for Azure management. So if you're talking the Azure uh, the management portal. Now, because you're access for me, because you're accessing that portal via your cloud native account, and these, you, know, you should separate admin accounts natively to, to, to on-premises, you should have separate accounts. I'll get into that in a later video. I don't really think this, because you're duplicating the, you're going to get more MFA. This is what I mean about productivity. If you were to enable this and enable that, because this applies to all applications, it includes the Azure management um, portal. So why would you, and this is how, when you get users complaining about, oh, I'm getting so many MFA prompts, it's because it's managed, it's because it's going through these conditional access policies. It's going, right, they require MFA for admins for all portal. Right, okay, when they access Azure, I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask them for MFA, right, done it. Later on, it might trigger, if you configure this, it's going to trigger that as well. So you're doing, a, right, halfway in your day, you're doing another MFA. Shouldn't be the case. So if you're, going to, if you're going to enable this one, if you're going to enable require MFA for admins on all, um, if we look at this, is for, for all apps, then I don't feel like you need to do it here because when you when you access the admin portal, you're going to be asked for your, and the chances are that, you know, you will have one of these roles, you'll be included and you're accessing the app, uh, the, the Azure management app. I don't think you need to do this personally. If you're accessing this account from a different account, again, if you've gone to the, 
I've never seen this, but if you're separating your your um, M365 admins and your Azure admins, you've got separate accounts. Then you know if you've got <clears throat> different different levels, and again, you know when you've got tier one, tier two, tier three access, that sort of enterprise model, then this this might be the case. Then you can that's a scenario where you can figure this right because you sep- you're separating the accounts, so you're accessing Azure management from a different account. That's the scenario where I would implement that right. Um, this is interesting one again. I've seen this one cause a lot of problems. We're quite compliant on hybrid Azure AD joint devices to, for admins. This is probably an area where, again, if, if you've got the scenario where you're accessing privileged access workstations, you know, um, I saw I saw a LinkedIn post about this and for using they're different using physical um, over over virtual. And I think again within the new sort of cloud world we live in, I think a lot more organizations are going to uh, virtual than privileged access and on physical devices. This is where you might look at configuring something like this. Okay, um, and then we've got phishing resistant MFA um, and, and again, require MFA for admin portals. Again, if you've got this configured here, why do you need this one? You're just going to cause multi, you're going to cause conflicts, confliction between policies and conflicts between policies, right? Um, so that's kind of what I want to talk a little bit about conditional access, right? I just want to move on to talking about um, another area. Um, so we, we've talked about MFA, we've talked about conditional access policies. So enabling, um, and this is obviously available for a different subscription, a different uh, license, but uh, enabling Microsoft Trainer for Identity, which is available in the, in the Defender portal, is going to help protect user identity and, and secure those user credentials. Uh, it's part of the uh, Defender XDR suite. And you can use it to identify sort of suspicious user activity, uh, sort of get incident timelines. Very, very powerful. It's got its own dashboard. Mine's not for some reason being weird. Probably not. Uh, probably not activated. Yeah. So there's a new sensor I need, I need to put on my my domain controller. Gives you the score. Kind of tells you what license I'm, I'm licensed for it for sure. I probably need to activate the new Defender for license for a sensor, which I can do that at some point. But here you can manage your service accounts. Um, you're probably not going to be able to see anything on mine because I've not got the latest um, latest sensor. And you can look at health issues here as well. And you've got different tools you can use. You've got different documentation, sizing tool for Defender Identity, readiness script, PowerShell modules. You can start configuring. So a lot of powerful. Um, you know, you can look at the, you can dig in to see how many how many users you've got. Look at advanced hunting. Um, no, thank you. So there's a lot of powerful things. You can look at how many hybrid users you've got, how many on-prem users. And as we go down, it's going to give you the identity score. Gives you a lot of information about your global admins, tagged for sensitivity. Again, I've not really got this configured properly, um, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll just activate the, the Defender for Identity Sensor, the latest one in my tenant, and we can take a, maybe in a separate episode. We can take a close look at that. But that's an area where you can manage identity from a from a from a security perspective. Um, and again, you can you can go and look at recommendations, improve your score here. Give you loads of identity recommendations which you can implement to to elevate and increase that security footprint from an identity perspective. Right. Final thing is Microsoft Sentinel. Now I've not got this enabled, so let's just quickly enable this in my workspace. I think I did at one point, but I probably deleted it um, when I was doing my tidy up. Um, so you essentially just need to connect Sentinel to a workspace. Let's just connect it to this one here. And then this is going to allow, allow you to essentially report on your your security. Uh, so it helps you protect, help, helps you provide threat intelligence um, and sort of investigate investigation capabilities. And it uses logs from Azure Azure Monitor logs, and Microsoft Onter ID. You can point them all at this workspace, Microsoft 365, and other services to provide sort of a proactive threat detection, investigation, response. Um, so here I can just uh, activate three license, and this is where you can manage. Um, go to overview. Manage incidents. You can automate um, remediation. You look at the data. You look at analytics. So it's very, very powerful for for auto remediating sort of um, identity security threats within your tenant. So we talked about three different ways there in which users can or organisations can can you know, plan and design when it comes to identity protection and, and managing identity security within Azure M365. Again, this is all part of the cloud adoption framework. And when you're planning and designing your identity. Um, provider, you know, we, I mean, these are things you can plan and design and implement at some point. And I think, again, these are areas where a lot of organizations, in my experience, just, just talk you enough time and effort to, they're, they're a lot, and I can understand why, right, that when you're adopting cloud, especially when you're looking at migrating 
um, and a lot of instances it's some cloud migration you've got really tight timelines you might be migrating away from a data center or you've got you know the clock's ticking before your renewal you want to get into cloud so a lot of people just lift and shift as they are and then they're just firefighting and and it, it can get out of hand i've seen a lot of organizations do that so but what happens is then when things get unmanageable they come back oh no our governance isn't there our identity isn't there you know our security is not where it needs to be and then they're just like they're just trying to uh, they're just they're just dealing with with technical debt then so if you do this up front spend a bit of time planning and designing things like identity and governance that can really be helpful and security obviously okay so that's that this part of the video done um, again i'm going to i'm going to continue to focus on our, our, on uh, identity in a separate i want to change it up a little bit i'm going to go back to governance in my next video and take a look at sort of management group structures and do a bit of designing around that and landing zone architecture uh, drop me a comment on the video around how you know what tools and security tools are you guys your organization using um to to manage identity um and you know security from an identity perspective and some of your i'd love to hear some 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 stories about how you guys have how it's improved your security footprint um if you're not subscribed why not click on that subscribe button also i think i've mentioned this a few times i do i do a lot of content around um microsoft certifications and that's all part of my my members sort of area that i have so you've got the link below in the description. You can become a member. I've got level one, level two, level three, IMIT Geek members. Level one gives you access to my fundamentals. I've got a lot more content. I'm trying to plan it and create it at the moment so I can release that. I've got some more exams coming out. I've got AZ900 and MS900 at the moment. Um, practical as well as theoretical. Um, and I'm working on some sort of practical, uh, some exam, um, practice exam questions as well at the moment. Uh, so you can subscribe to that for my, <clears throat> for sort of associate level. I've got SC. I see 400 or I see 200 I see 300 I've got um, AZ 140 the AVD one I've got the AZ 700 networking one I've got a lot more coming with the associate level stuff as well I'm going to do the admin associate one soon AZ 104 and from an expert level I've got SC 100 I am going to be doing these 305 at some point hopefully early next year or end of this year as well so get joining if you know I've got loads of good exam content um so make sure you can join a member and get there's loads of other perks as well like you know at a certain point i give out swag so i'm just trying to build that following and maybe do some live content as well anyway thank you for watching loads of useful to, things in the description links in the description make sure you click on those and, and make sure you give me a give me a shout on linkedin if you're on there as well so thank you for joining until next time goodbye